Hello friends, thanks for being here today. I'm gonna to do something in this video that I really haven't done much of on my channel. I think I should probably do more because it was kind of fun, kind of a challenge. I'm gonna be ranking some of the products I've used recently. So I've got like six different things and I've put them in order. We're gonna lead up to the best one and we're gonna start with the one at the bottom that I didn't love so much. And I will have demos popping up for each of these things. They're not in the typical order of facial application like base product, eyes, lips, whatever. So when the demos pop up and you're seeing the face kind of out of order, just keep that in mind. But I always like to be able to show you, not just talk about it. The first one, the one that was kind of the least appealing to me in this bunch, is my Empowered Palette by Huda Beauty. I know, you're probably like, what? I tend to have really good experiences with Huda Palettes. I think so much of what's in Huda Palettes is great quality. Love working with the mattes. There's usually some innovative shimmer in there, um, some unexpected shades, uh, an entire color story that pushes me to use, you know, a little different color scheme maybe than what I'm used to. I just feel like the quality is there, the creativity is there. I generally have a great time with Huda palettes. And so when this one came on the scene, I was like, oh, I'm definitely getting it. Like, didn't think much about it. I like the packaging. It's got like a giant QR code here and it takes you to um, some kind of promotion involving the palette. But like, like, it made me think, why don't palettes just put a QR code somewhere? And maybe they are, and I haven't noticed it, but they should put a QR code and it takes you to, like, a how-to video or something. Wouldn't that be useful? A series of tutorials or something like that. Anyways, it's a pretty palette. It's the standard size of a Huda palette. You got the big old mirror there, and you've got all the shadows on the inside. Now, this palette, to me, it's got a good amount of warm brown. If we look over here, we can see a lot of matte. Um, ranging from like a soft peach to a deep terracotta. We do have a dark plummy matte up here. A couple of mid-tone mattes here. Two definite cool mid-tone matte options. One more grayish. One's more like a matte taupe and kind of a rosy beige mid-tone right here. So I feel the balance of the mattes is pretty good. I wouldn't have minded another really rich matte or two, you know, outside of this one. Um, the two things that you're seeing here are actually creams. They call those gel liner hybrids. I at first like kind of mistakenly used one sort of like a base one day and I really didn't feel like it spread across the skin very well. Definitely like, go in with a liner brush and use one of those. They're all right as a liner. Um, you're getting one that's black and one that's a plum. So the mattes are the epitome of consistency Ease. As you watch my look building up and I go into the various mattes, like I can put my brush in, not even look, you know, I gotta know I'm at the right shade, but like I'm not being careful with them at all. They will turn out the right result without fallout at all. You can count on them, they're consistent, they're like the two thumbs up kid in class, you know, just straight and narrow, good stuff. And then the shimmers in this palette to me feel so wild. And sometimes I feel like brands feel so pressured to reinvent the wheel every time with shimmer and put in, you know, yet another texture that doesn't just take us to a metallic liquid metal place, but goes over that hump and turns into over the top flakes galore, it, hard to control. I've gotten that experience with several of these. These golds are kind of culprits there. Um, this one, which is your light shimmer that you're that I go to a lot, like I want that look a lot. It's hard to make it hang together on your tiny eyelid. Like I can swipe across the large surface area of my hand and make that shade be pressed in and worked in. But you know, what if I only want that shade on a small portion of my lid and the brush can't really do it and my finger's not quite precise enough, um, it becomes an out of control shade. Also, why did we need the two golds? And they're both like, you know, flaky and flakier. I get a lot of fallout with some of these. In past Huda palettes, I remember specifically saying that some of her different textures were at least not creating fallout all day on my face. They were hanging on there. Patrick Ta palettes, by the way, are some of the best at that. Putting in a texture that maybe it does need to be put on with your finger. Maybe it is a little different, but doggone it, it stays in place. These, I mean, I've got stuff all over my face by day's end. Courageous looks like it should be so interesting. It has kind of a purpliness and then I look at it from a different angle and I'm seeing more gold and I get that on the eyes it just looks dark it just looks like a brown sheer shimmer there is a shade that has like some solid gel going through it so you get kind of a cream effect with that and look how smooth and pretty that is 
that's nice. That goes on smooth. But even this shade called Do It, it looks like, well, maybe that's just a typical shimmer, right? That one's kind of hard for me to build up, actually. This one down here, Visionary, two shades swirled. We've got peach and plum together. That's pretty. Okay, that creates a really beautiful, harmonious, kind of shifty color that I like. But a lot of these shimmers, like one, two, three, four, they kind of let me down and I felt they were difficult. Now the end result for some looks that I have done has not been awful. I can look back at them and feel like, okay, I'm content wearing that around, you know, except for the eventual fallout that will happen all over my cheeks. I've done my best, but I feel like a lot of those looks were the result of a ton of efforting, you know, to get there instead of just kind of having fun. I don't feel like I go to this palette to have fun. Like I've been going to it to figure it out, to try to master it if I can. I don't love how chunky and difficult some of these textures are. And the overall color scheme isn't that amazing, interesting, different. We've got a lot of neutrals, warm neutrals, uh, bronzy shimmer, and then, you know, bring in the golds. We've got that one nice deep shade. Mattes are slaying it, but like shimmers are a big part of this palette and I don't love them. Comparatively speaking, like how do you feel about this palette and compared to other ones you've talked about, I prefer ABH Rose Metals. I prefer Natasha Denona My Dream Palette. I prefer that one from Sephora, the Wishing You Palette that was in my under $30 video. That one's beautiful. Now comparing the Huda Empowered Palette to other things in Huda's line, um, the Naughty Palette feels kind of comparable. I feel like we've got warm browns, a little more depth variety in this one. We've got shimmers, but I feel like they're more workable, more smooth, less off the wall. I really like this palette. If you like rich, kind of plummy berry neutral eyes, this one's really pretty. Let me hold them up together. And they're doing a few different things. They've got some really interesting shimmers, and I'm sure you're picking up on a little bit more pinky rosy vibe here. I'm definitely content having this, and I don't really feel like Empowered was such a must. Okay, moving on, working up from there. Um, I got a duo of these Airbrush Flawless Setting Sprays from Charlotte Tilbury. Um, this one I can maybe give to somebody, and I've been experimenting with this one quite a bit. Um, it says, party all night, stay all day. And it's a nice little mist. I enjoy the way it comes out of the bottle, which is an important part of mists. Some of them just can't get that right. I've tried some expensive ones that couldn't get it done, as well as more inexpensive options. Um, I think this is good. This has been hyped a lot. A lot of people love this. This may just be my personal skin's take on this. I think it's good, but it's not blowing me away. To me, it's not doing any better than Urban Decay All Nighter. It's not doing vastly better than Fix Plus, and it's not doing that much better than Wet n Wild Photo Focus Natural Finish, which is just a really nice setting spray, which gives, frankly, an even better fan of mist in comparison to this one right here. I don't know, guys. This one, you know, giving me a small mist. It's at least a very fine mist. It's just one of those products where I felt like it was hyped up, so I got it. I Maybe my expectation was set way too high given what people had said, but I don't feel like I needed this, really. Given what I own, um, owning Urban Decay All Nighter, I would say that's a step above this. In my opinion, with my skin type, I'm normal to dry skin. I don't necessarily give my um, makeup the biggest challenge in terms of oil production, you know, like someone who's really oily or calm but you know, I will experience wear down on my makeup from time to time. I feel like All Nighter is even more reliable than this. That's just that's just my take. Um, personal opinion here, okay? Some people might come away saying, oh, I, I loved that palette. I really enjoyed what was in there. And that's fine. You make your channel and it's all good. We don't have to all see eye to eye, but you don't have a robot here talking to you. You have a, a real human being who's been trying a lot of makeup. So that's just the way I see it shaking out here. We're getting a little better though with each passing thing, okay? Okay, I don't feel quite as bad about this as I did about that. We went to six, five, now we're at four. Something that's kind of toward the middle of the pack for me here is this uh, Patrick Ta face palette, the new one now, that has four blushes, two of them are creams, two are powders, and two highlights. One is a cream or gel, sort of, and one is a powder. Now, something I'd like to chat about, blush. We say blush is so popular these days. We say people are more into blush than they are into highlighter and whatnot. But how many people are really willing to go there with a statement looking blush? Like I still feel like people are super subtle with their blush and I want you to see the ad that is paired with this particular product. This is 
I think, meant to be worn fairly intense. I like a lot of blush. This is speaking to me on this colorful blush right here, this pink cream, and then you put that over top if you want to, or you can wear them separately. I feel like it's meant to be worn kind of major, and I'm sort of questioning the public how many of you are into wearing your blush that major. Um, this may suit me individually better than it suits a lot of the public who's into this more subtle, barely there blush look still, I think, even though blush is big. I've got a good amount of blush on today. As I sit here in the talking portion of this video, I've yet put another blush on that I'm going to be addressing soon. But here's my thing. Here's why I'm kind of in the middle on this palette. I adore the blushes, okay? I love these creams. I feel like the creams overall give a more subtle effect on the cheeks, and then these powders are just like wowza, like they can be really intense. And especially if you pair them with the creams, you're just like whoosh, a lot of color on the cheeks. You can definitely tell one tone from the next. You know, they're two distinct things, the pink versus the coral. I really like them. And I like how in the creams, there's a little bit of shimmer in there. It's, I can especially see it in the coral and it looks really pretty and glowy on the cheeks. Love everything about that. Now over here, I wasn't huge on the fact that the highlighter was basically just like that. Vaseline in there. I love so much of what I've used from Patrick Ta, but it's just like a clear sort of jelly type feel. Um, firm though, like the consistency of a clear deodorant. And you're going to pop that on and I don't need all cream highlights to be identical. So I'm not hating it, but I wouldn't have minded if there was a little more like actual highlighter pigment in there. But then what I really am not so much a fan of is the texture of this highlighter here. A lot of like micro fine sparkle in that actually. From a distance, I feel like it's looking fine, but when I come up close at myself, um, after I look through what's probably been fallout from the Huda look, there is just this micro fine sparkle. I can see it up on my forehead. It's not my most flattering highlight at all. And it makes me think back to the Patrick Ta palette from last year and think about what was in there. And, you know, it was intense blush palooza, but instead of having a highlight, you know, we just had another really good blush here, which was She's Baked. If you like blush, these palettes are for a blush lover, right? They're both intense, but if this is the kind of highlight you're gonna give me, I just assume have three blushes. That's what I'm getting at. So I'm in the middle on this. I just don't see people around and I don't see people in their application in little videos or TikToks or whatever doing near as much blush as I see in the advertising for these palettes. And I assume that was chosen by Patrick Ta. That's the vibe he wants to put out. And it's like, does everybody really love blush as much as they say they do? Because this palette is going there. And I love the blush part. I love two thirds, but I'm just not a huge fan of the highlighters. That's why it's just kind of in the middle of this video. Now we're kind of turning a corner into several things that I really, really like. Um, and one of them that I've been trying, it's a darn sample, people. This Dior Forever Skin Glow. Still working through this sample card. Um, I got this with a Sephora order, and I think this is a beautiful foundation. I already owned a full size of the Forever Matte, which is nice, you know, but it's comparable to so many other matte fullish coverage foundations that I own. And then this Skin Glow, I feel like it just looks beautiful on. And you're getting... A really nice sampling of shades here. You're getting six different ones. I would say one of these little pods is two uses. If you can kind of keep it covered up like I sit something on top of this, pretty much two full faces. And the shade that's best for me is that 2N Neutral, the lightest one on the card. But today, just for the purposes of using this, and because this isn't a super full coverage foundation, I thought I'd get by with it. I used the 3N Neutral and I just dabbed it around and blended it in. And I just feel like it looks gorgeous on my skin. It kind Kind of reminds me of Neutrogena Healthy Skin, maybe with a little added coverage boost, a little bit. It's just beautiful. It's just downright gorgeous. Uh, there's a very good chance I will buy a full size of this because of this sample. I like the way it wears on my skin. I like the healthy sheen. I like that I can pop on kind of a full coverage concealer with it and get those areas of my skin taken care of. But overall, the whole of my face looks really, really pretty. And overall, I think it looks more luminous than Natalie Portman's skin does here. Anyway, I like this foundation. I really, really have enjoyed it. I think it's very good. I'm really tempted to get it, although I, my mind keeps saying, Em, 
you do have Neutrogena Healthy Skin, and that's so good, and that is another one that makes you feel good and feel kind of surprisingly satisfied every time you pop it on. But I like this. I think this is really good. Okay, we're moving into a top two, so things are just getting really great here, okay? The best ever balm.com that I've tried, the best scent, a look that I absolutely love on the lips, this Swiss Miss balm.com. Oh my gosh, get it for holiday. You will love this so much. The scent, oh, it is pure artificial chocolate. It's looking brown. I'm adding to my lips right now. It just melts down. It looks so pretty. Like it kind of mixes with your natural lip color, like your lips, but deeper. I love the scent. There's a little bit of flavor, a little sweetness there. In case you've never tried a balm.com, think Vaseline vibes, but richer. I've enjoyed the cherry and the berry, but my gosh, this scent is just up there for me. When I saw on, I think it was Trend Mood or something came across my Instagram feed that this was a thing and I'm like pouncing on it. I just pounced. Oh my gosh, it's raining. We haven't had a decent rainfall in like months here. It's crazy. But I've got that on and I love that toasty color. I see that working for so many looks that I would want to be doing. Absolutely adore this. This was fighting with my top one over here. They're just like duking it out. Like I want to be number one. No, I'm going to be number Like They're just really, really close but I love this. I love it. Okay, the number one thing. This was sent to me in PR and that has no bearing on the way I rank these things because you've heard me say things about stuff I've gotten in PR. I don't hold anything back. I'm not paid or encouraged to even do a video. It's whatever I want to do. Nothing sponsored. But Persona has a new shade of their um, blush multi-stick and it's called Jam and it's my jam. It's my jam. This color is so Pretty. And I have added this at the tail end of all the demos. I like added a little bit more of this to my cheeks and it's so pretty. It's such a fresh color. I love it because it's kind of like the color punch freshness for fall that will look so pretty with your more dramatic eye looks. So you go smoky, you go gray smoky, or you go bronze smoky, especially I love a bronze and a plum kind of together. You get that glam eye going and then you add some of this absolute freshness, life-giving cream blush. Add that to the cheeks and then on the lips too. It's like I've already done the demo, but I wanted to put it on again. Like it's so pretty. I saw on Instagram these blush sticks, these various ones. She's got beautiful shades. She's got the bubble one. There's a pretty red. There's options. But this on the lips, mm, it feels great. It completely doubles beautifully as a lip color. And can't you see that type of shade with a chunky sweater and a dark, dramatic, pretty eye and the hair's just pulled up in the bun. It's just everything's coming together for fall and winter. There's so much product in here too. Like you use a big old chunk stick to be both cheeks and lips, having that fully pulled together look. And if you're sitting there thinking like, yeah, I am loving this concept here for it, but just can't really do that color. They've got the one called Teddy that's a little more of like a soft, neutrally type of shade. That might be some people's thing. Or the one called Kiss is the red tint. I say tint, but th there's a lot of color there. And then they've got Bubble, of course, which is that cool pink. Really, really nice, but I love Jam. I love that they released that shade just now. So that is my number one thing in this video. I think the reason why it edged out the Swiss Miss was just because it's multitasking nature. I love it so much as a blush. I love it so much as a lip color. So it just kind of came to the top there. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it made sense to you. Um, keep in mind, these are my personal opinions. I'm drawing from personal preferences and also comparisons to other things that maybe these brands have done or other brands have done. As far as my reasons for ranking them the way I did, um, another person could sit down, make excellent points, and maybe rank them totally differently. So she came up to say goodbye. This is Biscuits. Thank you all so much for watching. I hope you're having a wonderful day and I will see you again soon. I love you. Bye. I said bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.